At Arctic, we're on a mission to decarbonize the cold chain, specifically cold chain logistics, which are responsible for about 4% of global emissions. My background prior to this was in batteries. I started a company called EcoFlow. We made half a kilowatt hour net power stations. Hannah, welcome to HSN. Good to have you Thank here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. River is portable. Yep. Only 11 pounds. I had known refrigerants were bad, but I hadn't really understood the full impact of refrigerants. I really started to see cold chain as this invisible backbone. Um, it's responsible for distributing all sorts of vaccines, medicines, fresh produce. To me, this is really an intractable problem that sits not only at the nexus of, of climate change, but also of health equity and access. And so teamed up with my now co-founder, Mark, to start Arctic. So we started Arctic in late 2021 when we went out to raise our seed fund. Mark and I had already teamed up. We'd also done some initial market development work. We were lucky we'd been able to secure some non-dilutive funding from the Tomcat Center at Stanford. SOSB has been an investor from the get-go, so they joined our seed round and, and just have been huge um, supporters through their HACS initiative along the way. I did my undergrad in Duke in International Comparative Studies, so nothing uh, related to what I do now. And then Duke did my grad school and my master's uh, in earth science as well as my MBA at Stanford. Early on, I started my career in consulting and particularly on the private equity side, um, both between Boston and Shanghai. Um, and I realized I really like to roll my sleeves up and dive into things. And I didn't like to be in kind of an advisory or consulting capacity as much. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to move to Shenzhen. And at the time, Shenzhen was kind of the hardware um, you know, metropolis. 90% of the world's electronics are manufactured there. So kind of by living in Shenzhen really fell into, fell into tech and fell into hardware and then ultimately um, teamed up with some great other entrepreneurs to start EcoFlow. I'd always been super entrepreneurial as a kid. I had started a couple of, of kind of side businesses. And so it was exciting to kind of take a shot at it in a, in a larger scale. The number one piece of advice I give to other folks interested in starting a company is just make sure it's something you're excited to work on, even in the bad days, because, you know, entrepreneurship is not easy and, you know, it's never as high as you feel, but it's also n never as low as you feel. But the low days are bad uh, and wanting, you know, that this is an issue you care about, that you're excited to get up and work on. Um, if you think it's going to be five years, maybe it'll be 10. Right. And so making sure um, this is something you're committed to really for the better part of a decade uh, and that you you know, would be excited to work on, um, even if things twist and turn and, and surprise you. So I think that's really important, especially in a society right now that kind of, you know, pedestalizes entrepreneurship or oftentimes, you know, thinks of it as, as really glamorous. It's also important to recognize um, not many days are not, uh, and you need to be ready uh, and, and just passionate in those days as well. And we're really excited for what's to come. I mean, this is just the beginning.